The Earth has a limited amount of water. That water keeps going round and around and around and around, and well, you get the idea. This circular motion of the water is called the water cycle. There are several main parts to the water cycle. We have evaporation or transpiration. Evaporation is when water goes from a liquid to a, um, to a gas and evaporates into the air. Condensation, where our water condenses back to form clouds. Precipitation, where the water is released from the clouds back down to the earth. And runoff or collection, where the water or snow, sleet, or hail goes back and runs across the land, leading back into the ocean. We're going to break down each one of these parts, so make sure in your notes that they are very detailed with these four main parts. Okay, the hydrosphere, like we said earlier, is just the movement of water through the water cycle. So this is water all over Earth. The first stage in our water cycle or hydrosphere is evaporation. The water changes from a liquid to a gas by the sun's energy. So the sun heats the water, causes the water to evaporate. The sun heats up water in rivers, lakes, or the ocean and turns it into water vapor or humidity. The water vapor or humidity goes into the air. Another part of evaporation is transpiration, but this is where plants release water into the air. So you might think of it like, do plants sweat? Well, they kind of do. People perspire or sweat and, tra and plants transpire. This is what I mean. Transpiration is the process by which plants lose water out of their leaves. So the water that's in plants goes out through their leaves and we call this transpiration. It's another way to get water into the air. This helps evaporation by getting the water vapor back up into the air. Next we have condensation. Condensation is when water vapor in the air gets cold and changes back into liquid forming clouds. So water in the air is a gas. During condensation, that gas, those molecules, they come back together and they, those water droplets get bigger causing our clouds and when they get too heavy, we'll move on to precipitation. So what you need to know for this one is condensation is when the air gets cold and changes the water molecules back into a liquid, forming clouds. An example of this, so that you can understand it a little better, is that you can see the same sort of thing happen at home. If you pour a glass of cold water on a hot day and watch what happens, water forms on the outside of the glass. That water didn't somehow leak through the glass. It actually came from the air around the glass. Water vapor in the warm air turns back into liquid when it touches the cold glass. Try this out at home and see if it helps you understand condensation. Precipitation. Precipitation occurs when so much water has condensed that the air cannot hold it anymore. So basically the water droplets get too heavy for the clouds to hold. The clouds get heavy and the water falls back down to the earth in the form of rain, snow, sleet, or hail. These are the different forms of precipitation. The last part is runoff or collection. Water from the clouds 
runs off into oceans, rivers, or lakes. When water falls back to earth as precipitation, it may fall into oceans, lakes, or rivers, or it may end up on land. When it ends up on land, it will either soak into the earth and become part of the groundwater uh, that plants and animals use to drink, or it may run over the soil and collect in the oceans, lakes, rivers, where the water cycle starts over. So runoff or collection is basically where the water from pre precipitation runs back over the land and then just spills back into the rivers, lakes, and oceans. To sum up the water cycle, Look at the picture that's provided here for the summary. Make sure that you understand what evaporation is, what condensation is, precipitation, and runoff. 